So welcome everybody to the wonderful county of Shropshire here in England. And for those of you that watch me regularly, you will know that this is where I live. It is no secret. So I'm shooting local this week, something that I don't do enough. So I'm very excited for that. I also want to touch very briefly on the subject of why I choose to shoot with a crop sensor camera when, in all honesty, if I really wanted to, I could upgrade to full frame. So we'll get into that. And of course, we'll attempt to do some landscape photography with said crop sensor camera, my trusty Nikon D7200. So as always, let's go and explore. Ah, okay, so I haven't scripted this or planned it out or anything. I just want to sit and talk about this question for a few minutes. And I, ultimately, there's two things really. Firstly, this is a question I get asked quite a lot. Now, I don't mean that I just get bombarded with emails and messages on my Instagram from loads of different people. I just mean, you know, now and again, the odd person gives me a little message asking for a bit of advice. And this just seems to be one of the most popular ones. And, I just thought I'd rather do this than, you know, attempt to try and reply to every single person individually, which I'm never going to be able to do. Now, secondly, I just want to help people out at the beginning because I've been there. And I want you to know that I think I might have said something similar to, like, to this in a previous vlog, but I could just sit and research why do people use crop sensor cameras and just say all of that to you guys. But I don't want to do that. I want to sit here and be honest and keep a little bit of integrity and just share my own experiences basically. And to be quite honest with you, this only really replies one answer from as far as I'm concerned. I'm giving you my answer to this question. And that is because this Nikon D7200 as a crop sensor camera gives me everything that I need and more for where I am at with my landscape photography at this moment in time. It really is that simple. And that's the same as my foresight as well. I don't see myself needing to upgrade at any stage. I don't know when that's gonna happen. This gives me everything that I need for my landscape photography. Resolution or image quality, the features, it's got interchangeable lenses. I can focus on everything that I wanna focus on as a landscape photographer. And that, for me, the bulk of that is trying to improve and grow as a photographer. Now, firstly, as an indirect answer to this question, the best advice I could give to any beginners is don't ask this question. Don't focus on this question. Focus on getting outside with whatever camera you've got and growing and succeeding and failing as a landscape photographer and focusing on things like the art of composition and you know what focal length do I need? Get yourself out in the elements. Start finding subjects, things that are interesting to you as a landscape photographer. You know, try and get the fire inside of you. Try and, you know, inspire yourself by actually getting out into the landscapes. Let me try and put it to you like this, okay? You could have one person that's got a Nikon D850, say a classic, you know, full frame camera that's on the market at the minute. Very popular. Somebody with that camera. Then you could have another person who doesn't even have a camera. And both these people are, let's say, beginners in, land in the field of landscape photography. The person without the camera can go out into the Lake District, immerse themselves in the landscape and in the elements and think about landscape photography and composition. And of course, they haven't got cameras, so they can't take any photographs. It sounds very stupid, but hear me out. And then the person with the Nikon D850 could be sat at home doing nothing. You know, just researching about other gears, about other things that they could purchase, perhaps. The person winning in that situation is the person that's out that hasn't got a camera because they're growing as a landscape photographer. You know, they're thinking about it. They're immersing themselves in the elements they need to be immersing themselves in to grow as a landscape photographer. And even though they're not taking photographs, in a way, they're still out creating. So that would be my indirect advice to anybody that's answering that question. But yeah, to be honest, guys, I really don't need to say much else. I have this camera because it gives me everything that I need as a landscape photographer. I've just started printing my images I've only printed two so far I've printed one image which was my photograph of Travan in the Ogwen Valley in Wales and 
I'm going to talk about this, you know, in a later video. It's another topic for another day, but just briefly, it came out incredible. It looks absolutely amazing. You know, I spent ages on it, you know, on the photo lab that I used on the internet, figuring out which paper I needed and just learning a lot about printing as well. It was awesome, but it came out beautifully. And, you know, that's one thing in a series of different things that have made me realize that this is more than adequate for where I'm at with my photography right now. And yeah, it just looked beautiful. And then I, I did, I printed a second image in a, pretty much an A3 size of my photograph in Iona. And this was me just experimenting. It looked equally as good. You know, I wasn't particularly happy with the paper that I used, but it looked incredible. And again, it just sort of backed up the whole fact for me as a photographer that my crop sensor camera is more than adequate for me for where I'm at with my photography. So I really hope that helps people out, you know, and I think a lot of it, to be honest, is all just a mind game. And I really mean that. I think it's very easy to fall. It's a very slippery slope. You can fall into this, what do they call it? Gear acquisition syndrome, gas, where you can just sit for ages, you know, researching about gear. Let me say this right now. I'm gonna say this right now. I love gear. You know, I'm not here trying to sabotage anybody that's interested in gear because I love it. I love it. But what I'm trying to say is I think you need to be, you need to have a healthy relationship with gear. I love researching about gear. I find it really, really inspiring. I've said this to other photographers. I love it. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you're researching about gear instead of going out and, you know, shooting landscapes, that's when it can become a bit of a problem because then you're sort of obsessing over the wrong things. You're putting your energy into the wrong side of landscape photography, in my opinion. So that's something to really focus on. But yeah, with that being said, there's nothing really else to say, to be honest. And I'm gonna explore around this area. We're currently sat on, well, I'm sat on a tree, a fallen tree, but this land is actually a medieval, I think it's an Iron Age hill fort. And there's about 40 or 50 of these dotted around Shropshire. A uh, little bit of woodland, and obviously, you know, as we head up the fort a little bit, we should get some beautiful views around Shropshire as well. So, yeah, I'm going to head out and explore with my crop sensor camera and see if we can get any photographs that the conditions are looking pretty bleak, to be honest. But I really hope that's helped one or two of you guys out. I really, really do. And, you know, if, if you've got any any more questions about this, this topic, this subject, please, you know, comment below. I'll try my best to get back to you. But, yeah, to sort of conclude on that, just don't get so involved in that wrong side of photography. You know, it's nice, like I said, have that healthy relationship with gear, but don't get obsessive over it. Obsess with being out with your camera or being out in the landscapes and nature and just trying to grow as a photographer. That's the only way you're gonna grow and keep learning by experiencing the landscapes and making mistakes and failing and succeeding and all of that. Um, and it's fun along the way as well. And yeah. Let's go and explore these beautiful landscapes, shall we? Welcome to the top of this beautiful Salopian Iron Age hill fort. Obviously nothing going on now in the way of medieval activity, but I think it's gorgeous. Obviously very windy, you guys who watch me often, you know how much I love my wind. And uh, yeah, I just think it's incredible. I love being in places like this where you can just sit and admire the landscapes and really, you know, imagine how it must have been in the Iron Age, thousands of years ago, when there was people actually living up here, you know, there might have been a community of several families living up here. Ah, it's just, I'm so interested in that side of things, like the historical side of the landscapes and what must have been up here. And I'd love to just spend a couple of hours with the people and listen to their accents and the way they talk. And ah, that'd be incredible, wouldn't it? Now, I think this wind's sending me a bit loopy. I'm gonna try and get to the other side of the hill fort, hopefully shelter myself from this wind a little bit. I seem to say that all the time in my blogs, sheltering myself from wind. Anyway, that's the plan of action. Hopefully I can get my camera out because it's stunning up here. And yeah, let's carry on up, see what it brings. Oh, right, so I've actually come down 
from the Phil, uh, Phil Hort, from the Hill Fort. What you can see behind me there, it was just too windy and conditions weren't ideal for landscape photography or wasn't working. Now, as I've come down this hill here and come through this gate, we've actually come into this beautiful little forest here. And I have to admit something here. Last week, in my video with Ian Worth, when we went up Moel Sharbod, on the way back down, there was a huge pine forest, and I said to Ian, oh, mate, I hate pine forests. I hate pine trees. And he said to me, oh, do you? Like, I love them. I really like them. And, you know, we had a little bit of a discussion about it. And this little forest that I found here is actually a pine forest. So sorry, Ian, but I think I found a good one. And it sounds like I was a bit of a fraud. But I have to admit, this is gorgeous. And I think, you know, sometimes, especially as a landscape photographer, you can get into a forest and there's just a bit of a feeling that you get. You know, it just feels like it's a good forest for photography and you can sort of feel the magic a little bit like, and this is one of them, gorgeous. Now, in saying that, I'm shooting a little bit outside the forest. You know, I've only got one or two of the trees here framing my composition. And what I'm gonna try and do here is pretty nice scene. You can hopefully see behind me here. It's quite high dynamic range, but we've got this line here, obviously the path, the footpath here. And then we've got the gate as a bit of foreground. And then what I like are these is one or two trees either side here that sort of helping to frame the composition that I'm going for. And then that line faintly leads up the hill fort and we've got a few trees up there in the background. It's not an incredible, it's not going to be an incredible image. You know, it's not going to be award winning or anything like that. But what I really like here is the potential. I think if I come back here and there's some beautiful, you know, morning light, maybe a little bit of mist in the air, this could be a cracking little composition. So I'm going to get myself set up here now. I need to get my camera on my tripod because like I say, it's quite a high dynamic range here, but I'll do that. And I'm going to sort of play with my composition a little bit and of course talk you guys through it. So there we go, we are set up. I've got my beautiful Nikon D7200, my crop sensor camera, and my tripod all ready to go, and it's doing a fantastic job. It's doing a more than adequate job for me. <laughs> no, it's fine. And um, I want to revert back quickly to what I just mentioned a minute ago, and that's the fact that this isn't going to be an incredible image by any means. You know, it's, it's the potential that really drew me to this scene and this composition. You know, if I can imagine this on, let's say, a beautiful misty morning with some really soft golden side light and let's be ambitious, a beautiful red, burning red sunrise. <coughs> Absolutely amazing. So that's sort of what I'm envisaging in my head when I'm taking this photograph. But with regards to my little crop sensor camera here, it's doing very, very well in terms of exposure and dynamic range. My settings here are ISO 100. F11 and one one third of a second and it's dealing with it very admirably. I'm able to take this in one exposure, which is wonderful. Because this forest that we're in, I don't know if you can tell here, but it's very, very dark. And then the sky off there is, you know, even though we're in the, the evening now or the late afternoon, it's still quite bright up there. So it's doing really well in terms of dynamic range. I'm shooting this at about 25 millimeters, zoomed in slightly, and you know, I've pretty much mentioned the composition already. We've got the path, the gate is the foreground, the trees that are helping to sort of border the image a little bit and then beautiful hill fort in the background. So I'll pop that image up for you guys to see now. So I hope you guys enjoyed that photograph or at the very least can appreciate the idea that I had behind it or whatever. But. Yeah, I just wanted to stop very briefly and give you a quick update on my landscape photography calendar situation, really. And if you don't follow me on Instagram already, I'll put my name there on the screen somewhere so you can follow me. I give a lot of my updates there. But a lot of you will have watched a video that I did a couple of weeks ago now in the beautiful Scottish Highlands in the Glencoe area. Epic adventure. And judging by the reception that I've had from that video, you know, a lot of you guys seem to enjoy that as well. But basically I got an image there at the end of the vlog that I was really, really happy with. And that's going to be my February image. Beautiful panel of the three sisters. And you know, when I got that one home, started post processing with it and I was just so happy with it. So yeah, definitely the February image. But what I want to say is now onto March. That's all in the past now. I've been very lucky with January and February and fingers crossed that good 
fortune continues into March. So I hope you guys will stick with me for the next few weeks, the next few vlogs, where I'm going to be hunting that March image, that elusive March photograph on my calendar. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, with regards to today's adventure, all in all, it's been a cracker. And I really hope to help one or two years out with the whole full frame crop sensor debate issue, whatever you want to call it. And for anyone else who just watched me because they enjoy my vlogs, cheers for the support. And I hope you enjoyed this little micro adventure in the beautiful county of Shropshire. So I shall see you guys next week on the next adventure. Out. Thank you.